This week, we've been looking at techniques of supervised learning. Here, we'll start our study of a new technique, support vector machines. So how are support vector machines different? They resemble the clustering algorithms we studied on week three, in that you get clusters of objects in n dimensions, for example, here in two dimensions, and you try to figure out uh, where the clusters are. It is different from them in that we're going to tell the computer what the clusters are, and then the computer has to try to has to figure out what is the boundary between the two groups. For example, between the group with the uh, dark dots and the light dots in the charts there. One very neat feature of support vector machines is that it can draw lines to separate uh, clusters, but it can also draw nonlinear shapes to set the boundaries between clusters. So it is a, a nonlinear, highly dimensional method of classification. Let's look at a very simple example. Let's say we have one dimension, which is just, you know, a line. And this line is the number of times that you have the word greatest in a document. So this is the one feature that we have information for. And we have two categories of documents. Bad movie reviews on the left, marked in red, and good movie reviews on the right, marked in green. And so the bad movie reviews are probably on the left side, which maybe have zero, one, or two appearances of the word greatest. On the other side, we have the green dots, which maybe have, you know, the word greatest 10 times, 11 times, and 12 times, uh, let's say. So we have one group of documents, the bad reviews, which have, which have very low appearances of the word greatest. The count is very low. And then we have the green group where we see the word greatest many times in the documents. Let's look at the edges of both of these categories. If we went to the edge case of them, so for example, the one furthest away from their center, those would be, that would be uh, the center of the separation between the two clusters. So if we have these two extremes and we drew a line in the middle this line could be the separation between the bad reviews and the good reviews in terms of how many times we see the word greatest so for example if you see the word greatest less than five times it's a bad review if you see the word greatest more than five times it's a good review we choose the center of the two edges so that we could have the maximum difference. It would make no sense for us to put the separation line, for example, here, right in between the bad reviews. Let's say that the bad reviews are the ones that have less than two appearances of the word greatest. But, uh, we don't want the separation to be at the, at the edge because we want to generalize. We want separation between the groups to be the maximal separation, as big as possible. Um, so we put it right in the center in case in the future we see a bad document that has four bad uh, appearances of the word greatest or a good document that has six appearances of the word greatest. If we put the boundary in the center, these would still be classified correctly. If we put the boundary too close to the edges, then future examples might be classified incorrectly. So we're going to look at the edges of uh, both clusters and we're gonna put the separation right in the middle. We're gonna call these edges support vectors. They're going to be like the like the points that uh, determine the maximum separation here in the center of them. And the separation in between them is the margin. We want to maximize that margin. So these uh, are very are clearly separated and we have space to spare in the middle. This works with one dimension or it could work with two dimensions. For example, here we have uh, purple dots that tell you that people were in a bad mood and blue dots that tell you that people were in a good mood. And those are two 
uh, groups that we want to classify and our features are going to be time playing games and money made so for example uh, they have people in bad mood as playing too uh, as spending too much time playing games for example and not making enough money as you can see there's a general purple cluster there there's the light blue cluster for the good mood which has less time playing games and um, more money made but there's a distribution for example there's there's people in the purple margin in the in the purple dots that earn as much money as those in the good mood one but they play more games and so they will be clustered here instead of here with the good ones um, we want to set we want to draw a line that maximizes the separation between these so we want to find the points in this two-dimensional space that are the essentially the edges of the cluster that provide the maximum separation between the cases with the good the good the bad mood and the cases with the good mood so these uh, dots would be the edges and then your a, your optimal separation would be in the middle because it maximizes uh, the distance between the clusters and the separation would be again right in the middle so that in the future if you have a uh, purple dot that um, makes more money than the ones there you can still classify it in the purple region even if it's just a little bit below the margin we could um, by the way if you're interested in the equation what we're actually looking to um, maximize is the margin and the margin has to do with the um, um, finding the dots that uh, provide the maximum distance between these two lines so there's one line that goes through the edge of the bad mood and one line that goes through the edge of the good mood and we want to find the the lines that are at the edge and that are furthest apart so it becomes an optimization problem. We call the separation between the two groups a hyperplane. So if you remember from linear algebra, a hyperplane is a form that has n minus 1 dimensions from what we are examining. For example, here we have two dimensions, time playing games and money made. And our separation is one dimensional just a line so the line separates these two clusters this is a one dimensional hyperplane again because we had two dimensions that we were examining money and time and the separation between them is one dimensional the hyperplane again for two-dimensional space this, uh, the hyperplane is a line for three-dimensional space the hyperplane is three minus one equals two the hyperplane is just a plane that can that goes in between the two clusters described by three features and of course if you have five dimension five dimensions or five features then the separation will be four dimensional and so forth so support vector machines know what clusters they're looking for and they try to find the points at which the separation between them is maximum and then they draw a line that is right in between them. So it has maximum separation from this one while also maintaining maximum separation from this one. So it, it lands in the middle and it draws this separation, which is a line for two dimensions, a plane for three dimensions and so forth. In general, it's a hyperplane. We're looking obviously at a very idealized case where all the edges are very uh, separated and easy to find and also where a neat line could separate the clusters. In the next video, we will look at nonlinear separation and what happens when clusters have some overlap between them.